having a little bit of negativity is not so bad. But overall, the power of positive thinking, wonderful. I began thinking like a billionaire when I was in high school and when I was in preschool. I, I just, I've always had this kind of thought process that was very positive but very guarded. And that's what I mean by negativity. But it was positive but guarded. And I think that when I wrote the book and the reason it became a number one bestseller and even, I guess, to a certain extent, a bigger bestseller was the one I wrote just before it, How to Get Rich. Trump, How to Get Rich, and it's been a tremendous selling book. I happen to think the title is better. I think the books are equal, and maybe Billionaire is each actually better, but the title of How to Get Rich, I mean, that says it all. You say, I don't do it for the money. Can you explain that? Well, I do it because I love it. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. I have bad days, I have good days, I have days somewhere in the middle, but the end result is I love what I'm doing, and I don't do it for the money, and I make money because probably I'm not doing it for the money. I do it, and I do it well. I'm the biggest developer in New York. I love building buildings. I have a lot of fun building buildings. The fact is, I do it for fun. I do it for game. I do it for sport. I happen to make a lot of money doing it. If I didn't enjoy it, if I didn't really love what I'm doing, I wouldn't be successful. I wouldn't be sitting with you today, and I wouldn't have Trump University. Well, the message is you have to love what you do. If you do it for the money alone, it's probably not going to work. I have friends where I tell them, get out of this business, which is a good business, and go into another business, which isn't as good a business, because they like the other business better. They'll do better in a less good business, so to speak, than they will in the better business, because they like it. Well, I think self-discipline can be learned. I think you really can teach yourself self-discipline. If you want something badly enough, you'll probably have discipline. If you're going to be a great athlete, you have to work hard. If you're going to be a great business person, you have to work hard. It's no different. It's a different form of work. But self-discipline is a very important word toward success, and you really have to have it. And if you don't have it, most likely you're not going to be successful. It doesn't have to be all quality. I mean, I know a lot of people that make junk and they make it and they make it inexpensively and they sell it inexpensively and there's a market for it and that's fine. But it doesn't always have to be quality. I mean, not everybody can make the best building. Not everybody can make the best golf course or hotel or whatever it is you may be doing because the world doesn't want the best. I mean, not everybody's gonna spend $1,000 a night for a hotel room. People have to spend $20 a night for a hotel room with $10. So you can't always do the best, but you can do relatively the best and you can do a really good job of it and you can be very, very successful at doing it. I really consider myself a great builder. I think I build the best product and then all of a sudden you see this building going up and you see it selling out and everyone says, oh, Trump did such a great promotion. The fact is that if you take like the Trump World Tower opposite the United Nations that was recently completed, it's a great building. It's the tallest residential building in the world. I built it, I fought on it, I fought the unions, I fought the world, I fought financials, I fought everything. And then I get it built and it becomes a tremendous success and everyone said, he's such a great promoter. I know people that want to build up their name and they haven't done anything. I say, you have to do something, you can't just do that. You need the credibility of doing something. To be honest, I wasn't totally focused, I was having such a good time, it was coming in too easily. And I went back to work and I did a great job. I've always said the greatest job I've ever done was from 1990 to 1994. That was the greatest, there were four years of hell and other people went bankrupt and you'll never hear from them again. And my company became bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger to a point where now I'm one of the largest privately held companies in New York and it's been a real success story. And I believe the Guinness Book of World Records had me as the greatest personal financial comeback of all time.
I kept what I had. I survived. 